Hello, welcome to episode four of Movies and Us. I'm TJ. And holy heart failure, I'm Marcus. And this is the review show that reviews movies from the beginning, sometimes. Alright, so we're going into Batman 1966 here. Yay! Bring it up, it was released by 20th Century of Fox. It was directed by Leslie H. Martison, produced by William Dozer, and written by Lorenzo Semple Jr. It is based on Batman comics, and it stars Adam West as Batman, Burt Ward as Robin, uh, Cesar Romero as Joker, Burgess Meredith as Penguin, which is the who is Rocky's trainer in Rocky movies. Oh my goodness, you're correct. Yep. Now the reason I gotta watch those movies now. Yeah, Marcus has apparently never seen the Rocky movies, so yeah, you can yeah. make fun of him for that. Frank Gorshin is the Riddler, and I save Catwoman for last, who's played by Lee Merriweather, because she actually wasn't playing Catwoman in the TV show. It was apparently Julie Newmar was the Catwoman at the time. But she had other things going on in Clinton portray. I, I actually found why she wasn't in it. Go ahead. I don't know how accurate this is because, you know, 20, 30, 50 years later. But apparently they never told her that they were making this movie. So she got uh, co- uh, contracted, obligated to do another movie over in the UK called, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but I think it's called Monsieur Le, Le Quad. Like okay. M-O-N-S-I-E-U-R space L-E-Q, L-E-C-O-Q. And so she was... Stuck doing that, which never got finished anyways. So she missed out on this great movie. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, Julie Newmar only played... No, she... I'm sorry. Not Julie Newmar. Eartha Kitt is what people know Catwoman from. She only was yes. in three episodes of season three. Just three, that's it? Yeah, so she wasn't even in it a lot. But there's been three Catwomans over the years which is strange i found strange i don't know well over the years of that of this i guess not right oh, okay. now, was... Th- this was this isn't even this was released during the after the first season was released this was like in between season one and two that's correct but initially it, the man who directed it leslie mr leslie wanted to make this the grand opening for the batman series oh yeah yeah that was his plan it didn't like, succeed No, no. But money and all that kind of stuff, you know, usual. Yeah, gotcha. So, uh, we open with a dedication to, like, the people who fight crime and... You want to read that or can I read it? Go ahead. Uh, Acknowledgement. We wish to express our gratitude to the enemies of crime and crusaders against crime throughout the world for their inspirational example. To them and to lovers of adventure, lovers of pure escapism... Uh, lovers of unadulterated entertainment, lovers of the ridiculous and the bizarre, keep that stuff in mind, fun lovers everywhere, this picture is respectfully dedicated. So once you read that and see that in the beginning of the movie, you know how this is going to play out, especially after the first five minutes or so. Yep. So we open, well, we open with, you know, an introduction to the characters and like credits and stuff like that, but we really open with Batman and Robin running through the yeah. city. Hey, can I imagine this is our first movie in our list that has color in it? I believe. Oh so it was yeah, kind of, it was very refreshing, and that was very. This couple, this movie is very colorful. Uh, well, so like, for reasons. Yes, for well, it's sixty, so yeah. Uh, before we even dive into it, I guess I should mention <laughs> when I watch, I watched this. Like last night beforehand, okay. and I was did not go into this in the right set mindset. Oh no, really? Yeah, no, I did not go into this for the right. I don't know what I was expecting, but man, it hurt at a few spots. <laughs> I came in so happy and excited to watch this, and it felt all right. I'm I'm so excited to see how you feel about this now. Like I was. It was, I don't know, I knew what it was, because I have seen a few episodes of the series, I knew what I was getting into, but I guess I just didn't come in with the right mindset, and, like, I have notes upon notes of just things that bothered me. 
really? I have noticed in the pond. That's the things that made me just smile and so giddy and happy. All right, so Batman and Robin are rushing towards Wayne Manor. I don't know who the two people are that they wave to, but I when they go in the house, the old two old couple people. I bring it up because I think they're characters in the show. Yeah, I, I picked up on that a lot, especially, like you said, when they're running to what they're doing in the beginning. You see a lot of glimpses of other characters and people, like, are these people from the show or just yeah. random so bystanders? I, I just wanted to bring up, I'm not sure who they are, and I'm not going to know other cameos or anything like that because I did not watch the entire series, I've and I haven't seen an episode in 20 years. No. Anyway, they run into the Wayne Manor. They go in their stupid office. Hit the stupid button under the stupid statue. Hey, 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 hey. This is not stupid, first off. That set decoration is beautiful. Slide down their poles, which has a switch halfway yes. down. <laughs> the, the costume changing. Everything in the bat, bat layer, for some reason, bat cave, for some reason, is, has big signs on it that tells you what these things are. And so right. the switch says, was a costume changing switch, I think? It says automatic costume change. Because <laughs> they don't change themselves. It happens automatically. Yeah, they slide down their, work, their normal day-to-day clothes. Yeah. So Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson slide down a pole, and they come out as Bruce Wayne and Robin. Or Batman and Robin. God. And they get in the Batmobile and start driving so that they can get to the Batcopter. My first note is, Batman is a vigilante, right? That's correct. Why does he have employees? You know, Okay, thank I'm glad you brought this up, too. Not only why does he have employees, why is it a helicopter in a, I guess, commercial airspace? Like, who's funding this? Right, exactly. Who, like, how are, is everyone okay with this? I mean, they do mention later that he's a deputized <laughs> something of the law, officer of the law. But I don't, he's still a vigilante. I don't know what the hell this is. So, they're in the backcopter, and I thought this was at the end of the movie. But no, eight minutes in, we get the famous... Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Before, before you get to that, and that shocked me too. But uh, as they're flying over, for some reason, there's like bikini babes oh, yeah. on a, a hello pad that he waves to. <laughs> Military service members on the ground, they take their hats off, salute him. Like, what are we watching? That's why That's why I wrote Batman's a vigilante, right? This is, all of this is, like, bonkers. But we get the famous shark scene with Batman in the copter. But before that, they drop down. They're in the Batcopter. They drop down the Bat Ladder. And it says Bat Ladder yes. at the bottom of the ladder. Why do, you need the, yes. why do you need to label the Bat Ladder? Why does it need to be called the Bat Ladder? I do not listen. There's a lot of bat gadgets. I in I understand, but the ladder is a part of the copter. This part is just it boggled my mind. Boggled my mind. So anyway, they're trying to get onto this yacht. Batman's on the ladder. He's telling Robin to lower him, and then the yacht disappears. And Batman's in the water, and he gets bitten by a shark. The, the jankiest, fakest, rubberiest shark bites onto. Batman's leg, and he and just uh, swinging with him on a, on a bat right. ladder, and so this shark's got his leg. He's literally biting his leg. One, there's yes. no blood, which is no blood, there, no wound. There's not even a hole in the costume. <laughs> no, I mean what? But, but the way Batman gets the shark off of him is he asks Robin <laughs> for shark repellent. <laughs> shark repellent. <laughs> now, everybody knows about the shark repellent. Yes. However, what I don't think they do know is that there's not only shark repellent in this copter. There's more. There's also barracuda repellent. There is whale repellent. Oh, man. And there is manta ray repellent. Why those three? Why they have it stored in their copter? Why Robin climbs down and hangs upside down to hand them said repellent to get this off are all mysteries to me. The only thing that makes sense why Robin's uh, bent down that way is to show off that he's an acrobatic orphan, oh, right? That's what his origin I is. I know. And I, I, another thing that doesn't make sense about this is they're they're uh, flying in the air and they yes. just both climb down the helicopter. The helicopter stays perfectly in the air. Does it no autopilot, no, that's possible. I, I guess there's autopilot in this helicopter in 1966. 
Oh, you got to continue. I'm going yes. on. And then finally, after they get the shark off of it, the shark explodes. <laughs> he sprays the shark in the face and lets go, falls to the water, and... <laughs> so I'm going to spoil it right now. Apparently, the penguin stuffed it with TNT. Oh, so funny. It's so good. This is great. This is gold. So, after they failed to do that, we're ha- now Batman's having a press conference. In the commissioner's office with a bunch of reporters and they're asking questions. And then apparently Russia can just send reporters over to America because we. Yeah, I thought <laughs> to me that was weirder than the whole shark thing, honestly. I will I will bring up that this I didn't know she was Catwoman at first. Neither did I. But anyway, this, she, she's using a fake name, Kat, Katia or something like, like that. It's, it's something stupid long. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but it's important. But, you know, she's like, take off your mask so I can take a picture. Why would he do that? Yeah. Even if you're from Russia or China, from wherever you're at, you would know he's not going to take his mask off. Right. But here's the other problem that I have. Robin goes on a whole spiel about how we, we need to keep our secret identities, and he's got this tiny mask on. Yeah, everyone sees who you are, Dick! <laughs> you sound like you like this movie a lot, TJ. Uh, I like it. There was a certain part that broke me, and I'll get to it. <laughs> oh, I'm curious. So, the Russian girl is Catwoman. And then, yes. and then, after the press conference, there Batman asks, what supervillains are out of are oh. free at the time? <laughs> and, you know, it's Catwoman, Riddler, Joker, uh, uh, Penguin. And what's funny that they 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 reveal this by having us uh, was a closed circuit TV show oh. frozen stills of their pictures off a of video, I, which is I wrote this down later in my notes. I'll say it now. This Batman must have stole Captain America's omniscient TV from 1944 <laughs> because yes. they have omniscient TV a lot through this. They're trying to figure out who, which one of these villains are behind it. This is my favorite one of my favorite parts. Did you write down the deductions? I didn't write down the whole thing, but I wrote down with some some of it. Because the only one I remember off the top of my head is we were at C. So C for C stands for Catwoman, and it starts with things are pretty fishy, fishy penguin. Then to the C, C Catwoman. Then to what was the next one? Something pulling my pulling leg. my leg. Yes, to Joker pulling my leg, Joker, and this is a some kind of riddling riddle, Riddler. And from that, <laughs> from that, they are all working together. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> when they started with the deductions, I literally slapped my head. You too. Oh, I had the biggest face palm. Just, Not only was I laughing, I was face palming. So I, was, I, I wasn't even laughing. I was so <laughs> dumbfounded <laughs> at how stupid it was. Uh, There's stupid deductions, and it gets worse. Because the deduction is not just stupid, it was so forced. Because they have all four people in the office come up with separate parts of the deduction, and they were just trying so hard to get it out. So then we're introduced to the United Supervillain Front. But, you know, Catwoman is the undercover Russian reporter. So she goes back there and we get introduced to Joker, Riddler, and Penguin. Now, I want to... Yes. They're, they're being... The Riddler has a stupid laugh. Joker has a stupid laugh. Penguin has a stupid laugh. And they... Nah, nah. And Catwoman likes to go purr a lot. But in their lair, each of the three male supervillains have their own shelf full of stuff. Like, each shelf has private on it, and one says riddles, one says jokes. I forget what the Penguin says. But the Penguin... I never saw the Penguins. It's there. But Penguin has... Because Penguin has the the fish tank with the two fish in it. Yes, okay. The two Oscars in it. it, Which comes up, I was like, I'll bring that up later, too. Those two are right there. But so yeah, they're just. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just found Catwoman's. I'm watching the scene right now. Catwoman has a little pink fridge. It looks like, and on it says catnip, cat something else, and I think purse. 
personal. Her I don't know. personal. Pers- that's what it says. Personal. Okay. Yeah, she also has like one of those dress things that you go behind and can change. Yes. So she's got like the rest of it, but uh, those three have, you know, their little. They each go stand of like. I'm looking at penguins right now. It says penguin food where the fish are. <laughs> But they each, when they're introduced to them, they each go stand in front of their shelf. But anyway, they kidnap this scientist guy. And they discuss their evil plan, which I don't even know what it is at this point. No, I honestly, I like, so it made no, none of this makes sense. So like, we can't really describe to you what the plan was. Yeah, it, it's just so ridiculous at this point. After we're introduced to them, Batman and Robin realize that there's a dinghy, an illegal dinghy in the middle of the ocean that they have to figure out by randomly pushing buttons on a computer that realize that it's illegally placed there. So they go there because they assume that the bad guys have left fingerprints behind and, and we get introduced to a bat boat. Now I bring out the bat boat because it's just docked at a, a pier. Yeah, no, no protection. No protection. Anyone can get in that boat. It's just sitting there. It's not chained up. It's not disguised. It's just there. And how they get down to it, there's a ladder, and right next to the ladder is like a little pole they slide down on, because why not? And yeah, it's a bright blue, ugly speedboat, a big bat head on the back of it. So Penguin has a submarine. Oh, can you describe the submarine, please? To the-, the submarine is a penguin. And his little rudders in the back are his little penguin feet. Go ahead and when you watch this movie, if you've seen Awesome Powers, any of them, and you enjoy those movies, this is what you're getting. Except for those are intentionally satire, and this is like unintentional? Yeah, no, I'm guessing. this is unintentional. This is what they thought Batman was. Yeah, but they knew but they knew they were making fun of it still, if that makes sense. They weren't going for dark, obviously. They were going for fun. And it's, this is a fun movie. So, <laughs> I was saying, I could tell I enjoyed it. Batman and Robin are on the on this dinghy thing, trying to think. So, Penguin, tell I guess Penguin's in charge of everything. At least the stuff underwater, yeah. Because he tells the Joker to lo- load the torpedoes, and they start shooting torpedoes at the this dinghy that blow up Batman and Robin. Batman, well, before the, but before, before go ahead, they start, go ahead. before they before they start firing these uh, torpedoes. For them to find out that Batman and Robin are up there, they put the uh, periscope up. And of course the periscope is a penguin's head. And the dinghy is a giant magnet that keeps them <laughs> tied to the dinghy with their with their belts. Because I guess they can't just take off their belts. But Yeah, why? But Batman pulls out a polarization machine that destroys torpedoes. One, I don't think polarization works that way, but okay. No. And two... He only managed to destroy two of them. He only managed to stop the two of them because the battery dies in the machine he has. Yes. Then they're going to die. There's no doubt about it. The third torpedo is going to hit. Mm -hmm. But then a school of dolphins jumps in the way of them and saves them. And and Batman says, those brave porpoises jumped in our way and saved our lives. (laughs) I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) All of which happened off screen. So my 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 head cannon makes that Aquaman uh, sense that they were in danger, and so you know what, dolphins go sacrifice yourselves, bros, for the Batman. So uh, Batman calls the Pentagon. Oh, this is so good too. This is a good movie. And he's like, he asks this general, who I guess is playing a game with this other girl agent. They're both playing a game of tiddlywinks. It's an old game where you just. Try to flick little plastic pieces into spots with points on them. Whatever, don't not get into that. And but behind them is a, a bin <laughs> with a big green sign that says "classified waste." It's just it's the Pentagon people. That's what they do. But Batman asks him, "Did you sell a submarine to somebody?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, Batman. We sold a sold a, a, a decommissioned, I think, nuclear submarine or something. Something along those lines. You have his name. Yes, Batman, we do have his name. What's his name? He and Quinn. <laughs> Penguin, huh? <laughs> Hold on, we're not done yet. Why, Batman? Why did we do something wrong? 
Do you have his address? I don't, I don't think he did, no. No, he gave him a P.O. box. <laughs> what was it? I don't remember. It was a P.O. box in some place. I don't remember. <laughs> and it's like, and Batman's like, you sold a super submarine to the Penguin without getting a, a dress. And then the government guy's like, I think we did something wrong. So, everyone in this world's an idiot except for Batman and Robin, apparently. Uh, it, it's hard to like <laughs> see where this movie stands politically wise because there's making fun of Pentagon. But earlier they, they had Batman and Robin say, support your local police. It's like, are you guys pro higher up? So, you guys just making fun of kids? Do like, what's, what's going on? Is there a statement on all of this movie? And later on, you'll see some more stupidity. So, then we get the first. Riddle joke. Oh. Did you write these down? No. I was going to, but these were just long and dumb. I couldn't. I couldn't write it down. The Riddler shoots a, a missile in the air. It explodes into words of a riddle joke. Okay, I got it. I got the a joke. <clears throat> Good. Okay, the first one says, What does a turkey do when he flies upside down? The second part says, What weighs six ounces, sits in a tree, and is very dangerous? So, the turkey upside down, apparently, he gobbles up, and then the six ounce one in the tree is some, I forget what kind of bird it is, but it's a bird with a machine gun, and Robin just solves these riddles like it's no issue. How he comes to these answers makes no sense, and at this point, my brain broke. And and you're only 30 minutes in, mind you. This is only half an hour in to an hour and a 44 minute movie. I was like, because anytime a riddle or something like that comes on the screen, I try to figure it out. Yeah, same. But but there's there's no way. These, these riddles are so outlandish and so stupid. And the answers there's... are so stupid. Yes. So stupid and impossible to figure out. I was just like, ow, you hurt my brain. And... There's, I think they're in the uh, commissioner's office at this time, and they're talking to each other, Batman, Robin, the commissioner, and the police chief or whatever. Yes. And they're, like, discussing, okay, so what's their plan? Are they trying to take over the city? No. That would be one of them. Two of them is, like, the state. Three of them, the country. But all four of them, they're trying to take over the world. Dun, dun, dun. No, no, better yet, better yet. Holy horseshoe, Batman. <sighs> the bit bad guys fail to kill Batman and Robin. So they come up with this elaborate scheme to use all their greatest things to kill them. Oh my goodness. And how are they going to do that? Is this the one with the, the, the window? That one? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know how to begin. Okay. They want to use Catwoman's secret identity. Kitty, her nickname is Kitty Cat, her secret identity, because that's clever. To lure Bruce Wayne as a victim to make Batman save him. And so when Batman comes flying in at a certain angle, well, he's going to land on a jack-in-the-box that's going to shoot him out of a window, which is going to shoot him into the water, into the arms of Penguin's octopus, which is which is filled with TNT. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> this is their elaborate plan. They couldn't figure out a way to get Riddler in there, so they're like, we'll use one of my Riddles to yes. get them to the warehouse or whatever. Which is funny, because this is all his plan, too. He's like, oh, I should be doing something, too, I guess, guys. Uh, R- riddles. That's my thing. <laughs> so then the whole movie stops for, like, 20 minutes for date night. Yeah, this is where I mentally checked out. Like, okay, phone time. I will give the show credit. Even in this Batman and Catwoman are still romantically entangled. They are. I liked Adam West as Batman, or as Bruce Wayne at least. Yeah, he's not a bad Bruce Wayne. No, no, no. Not probably not the best one I've seen, but he's definitely charming and has the looks for it. But yeah, I mean, essentially, Catwoman and Bruce Wayne and Kit Kat, you know, they go out to dinner. Robin and Alfred in the Batmobile following inconspicuously i say in air quotes because <laughs> alfred's got even a, a smaller mask on than freaking robin and he's dr- he's still still wearing his alfred gear 
and still wearing it. Yeah, with, <laughs> with Robin in the seat next to him. Yes. <laughs> and Batman was like, before he opened the south, he has Alfred if he had his driver's license. Yes, in my wallet, sir. Because I guess Robin's not allowed to drive. <laughs> I forgot he's supposed to be a kid, right? I guess. I can hear your uh, your anger. So Robin and Alfred <laughs> are following Batman with an omniscient TV. But, you know, it's getting spicy to stay. You know, they're starting to kiss and stuff, and Robin's not into that. He's too young for this. She's like, she has cuties. Uh, or she's just jealous. That's that's the vibe I was getting. So, did, you, did you get that too? I didn't get the vibe, but now that I mention it, I think I think that kind of got it too. Yeah, because he was like really like, I don't like this. I'm going to turn this off. Like, mm, okay, Rob, let's see where you're at. Yeah. You <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think that's what we're, I got out of it now too. Now that I think yeah. about it. He's definitely jealous of the date. <laughs> Yeah. So he turns off the TV, and then, as of course he does, so all the villains come in and attack Bruce Wayne on their date. Like, it's ba- it's Penguin, Riddler, Joker, and Henchman, and Bruce Wayne starts kicking the crap out of them. He does. You're giving away that you're Batman, idiot. <laughs> yeah, same funny style and everything. Oh, I forgot to mention they got there on Jetpack Umbrellas. How did we forget that? I don't know. It was a Wizard of Oz rip-off, rip though. It really was. So they're fighting, they're fighting. The villains overcome Batman. They sneak him to a lair. Well, as they're sneaking away, Robin looks up and says, uh, Holy Halloween, Alfred. What's going on? He flips the TV back on and sees that the date room has been torn to pieces. So they keep Bruce in line by threatening Cat, Kit Kat Girl. And then and pretty much they have Bruce Wayne in their secret hideout. And then their whole plan falls apart. Their whole elaborate plan to get... Batman there, they let Bruce Wayne see Kit Kat, who is Catwoman in disguise. Yes. And he mentions to her that he has this thing on his elbow that all billionaires have in case they're kidnapped. So the he knew the bad guys were listening, so the bad guys untied him so they can get to the elbow, and then he starts attacking them. And then one of the yeah. and then one of the henchmen falls yes. into their elaborate stupid plan. Yeah. So Bruce escapes, and then we're introduced to the whiskey machine. The whiskey machine? Yeah, it, that's what they said. It, it was designed to create whiskey, but it's the dehydration machine that apparently takes all the moisture out of you and stores it in a backpack, or, I guess. So they bring in penguins, guinea pigs, which are actual five humans with guinea pig shirts on. Yeah, it says GP1, GP2, 3, 4, and 5. And they use it on these guys, and they turn to dust. So I'm like, did they just kill five henchmen? <laughs> five henchmen who are willingly just stood there taking the brunt of the zap. This thing looks like a reverse super soaker. To, like, it's just big orange and blue. Just super soaker colors. I did think it was weird that they were all being turned to dust, and they didn't even blink. They are like, okay, I guess we're being no. turned to dust. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, like, is this a cult? Like, what are we watching right now? It was really uh, eerie. But they're not dead. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that later. <laughs> but Bruce escapes, goes get... Oh, hold on. Uh, well, I'll be like... <laughs> they're so... They're going back to the whole dust pile thing. Penguin, the Riddler, and Catwoman all lay down by the dust piles, just enamored by what just happened. And they get Catwoman to sweep the stuff up. <laughs> and Penguin says my favorite line of the whole movie, which is, be careful, my dear. Every one of them has a mother. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you just zap them to dust ashes, but now you're worried about these people. Did you notice <laughs> Catwoman is never in any of the fights? Yes. Yes. She's never in any fights. She's barely there. She's pretty much a glorified maid at certain points. And it's sad to say that because she's a great character in general. I mean, she's not even bad in this. It's just no. anytime that anything physical happens or anything, they they don't have her involved at all. Now, I wonder if that's just a production. Like, they don't want to show a woman fighting or getting hit by men. Yeah, probably. So Bruce escapes. He goes gets Robin. Yes. And Robin asks why no one noticed a bunch of freaks climbed up. And Batman explains that uh, because this town is full of Drunks, essentially. 
Robin's like, drinking is evil. You shouldn't drink. These people are evil. Why are we bothering Savior and these people? And Batman's like, everyone's, every life matters, Robin, even the evil people. I just want to mention that Robin is not so nice. He is willing to let people die because yes, if you is. don't agree with his morals, you're an evil <laughs> son of a... <laughs> anyway, uh, they go in to try and free Kit Kat, but... Oh, they, they sneak in by they're doing a classic rope climbing sequence where they just, you know, hit the camera on a 90 degree angle is had them pretending they're climbing up a wall. Just a classic old school. Yeah, and, and it, they did have a little nice little joke where an old man opens up the window, looks out <laughs> yeah. and says, like, he doesn't believe his wife and he goes, oh, well, I, there was someone walking up the wall. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a reference to the show in general because I know a lot of people meet Batman and Robin while they're climbing, correct? I don't like, remember. One time I think meet Sammy Davis Jr. and other characters. And I don't people. remember, but they don't find the bad guys or the Kit Kat in the and they uh, hide out. They find comic bomb, like a bomb you would one of those circle bombs that you would find in <laughs> cartoons, or even maybe if you ever played Legend of Zelda, one of those bombs. Yep, the big black ones with a sparkly yeah fuse lit with the longest fuse that I have ever seen. So here's the thing: the bomb is lit by fire. You can put the fire out by putting it in water, or he can just. Touch the fire with his hand and put the freaking fuse out. But well, excuse you that. Know, I, n- I never thought of that. Never thought of that. <laughs> At any That's point, you point. gotta do that. But even if you, you need to find water, there's a fish tank with penguins' fish right on the shelf there. He could have just turned it upside down and put it in the water, and everything would have been solved. But no. He goes downstairs with this bomb, <laughs> and then. You want to tell them what happens for the next 10 minutes? He's holding his bomb, first off in front of him, runs down the stairs. Everyone in the bar, if you value your life, evacuate. Everyone dispersed besides besides two plumpless women in the front eating crab legs or whatever. So now he's like, okay, says I can't dispose of the bomb here. Let me run on out. He runs out to the main street. And for some reason, everyone's out and about. A group of nuns, bystanders. A little marching band thing. So he runs one direction, runs to a mother of a baby, runs back, runs into the nuns, runs another direction, and so on and so forth for five, six minutes. It's and it's the same lady with the coach, the marching band, and the nuns seem to be following Batman throughout the streets. Yes. And he's holding this bomb, running back and forth. And there's several piers. He there's water everywhere. But he goes to throw it, and there's a boat behind him. Who can, down there, a boat underneath him. There's pigeons on the other side. He can't kill the pigeons. But if you throw the bomb into the water, the water's going to put out the flame and it's not going to explode. This man, dressed in a bad Batman outfit, with a big, comically <laughs> bomb in his hand, running back. No one is batting an eye to this. They're all just like, la 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 la, nun stuff, la 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 la, mother stuff. No one is, are you okay? Do you need help, sir? Yeah, no, no one. Nothing. I didn't even think of that. Everyone's just going about their day. Like, yes, no one is reacting to this. Like, no, that's just another another day on the on the pier. No one's running away at all. They're all no. following Batman through the streets with this bomb. <laughs> this movie's ridiculous. Like I say, he goes to throw it over his couple on the boat. Can't throw it there. Apparently, he get he he get to a, he gets to a point where he says, "Some days you just can't dispose of a bomb." <laughs> like what? What, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> and then it explodes off screen. Of course. And then Robin shows up, and Batman's hiding behind these metal poles. <laughs> he says he managed to dispose of the bomb and hide behind the poles because, you know, they wouldn't get blown up or either, whatever. So, the bad guys <laughs> early in the movie kidnapped this scientist guy. He's a, he's a captain, I thought. Like a... <sighs> Commodore of the thing. I'm looking up real quick. Sorry. He's. I know he's a scientist because he's the one that created the machines. Is he a scientist? I didn't know that. He might be a Commodore too, but he's the one that I created hit... the, de- the dehydration machine and stuff. Yeah, his name is Commodore Schmidlap. Whatever. All I know is that he created them. And then at this point, after the bomb, the penguin shows up dressed like them. Oh, this this disguise is so good, people. <laughs> It's literally the penguin, who's like half the size of Batman and Robin, 
Still has his monocle on. Still has his uh, smoking device in his mouth. Still with <laughs> his umbrella. Still doing the hang, 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 hang. He shows up dressed like him. And Batman and Robin aren't even fooled. They know it's Penguin. But because of the logic of this movies, they can't prove it's Penguin. <laughs> so now they need, they need proof that it is him. Like they want fingerprints, but he's wearing like plastic fingerprints well, things yeah, on. Yeah, and his excuse is, yeah, I crushed them in my in an accident, and the surgeon put rubber tips on them or something. <laughs> and some kind of eye exam you need to do to him. Right, but his plan is he wants them to take him to the bat cave. They do the, this eye, I guess, because your eyes can identify you somehow. I don't know if that's real or not. If they made that up, but. Apparently, it's this I think can identify if it's the real Commodore or Penguin. Just take off his makeup. Take the hat off and, hey, it's the Penguin guy. <laughs> oh, I know. is that Batman sprays him with gas and takes him to the Batcave like he wants him to. So they take him to the Batcave and they're getting ready to uh, make him take this test. But Penguin's like, can I have some water? And they point him to the, the machine that says water. For some reason, that has two settings, heavy and soft water. So Penguin goes over there, and it's co- it's conveniently blocks him off from Batman and Robin, so they can't see anything he's doing. And he pulls out the little vials and accidentally hits the switch to heavy and sprays the dust uh, with water, and the henchmen just suddenly appear back as normal humans. And so the- everyone's surprised, and the henchmen attack. Batman and Robin jump on the computers, get ready to do the pow, smack, ka thing. And the second they punch a henchman, whoop, he disappears. Yeah, they atomize. They literally kill five henchmen here. <laughs> yep. Unintentionally, though. They didn't know what's happening. They, this movie killed five henchmen, which was surprising. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a couple moments of this show I surprised me. Back when they had Bruce Wayne captured, um... He Bruce threatens the bad guys and says, "If you hurt Kit Kat Girl, I will kill you." Yeah, like Bruce Wayne got really dark a few times in this. I was like, "Oh wow, I did not expect that from this Bruce Wayne." No, especially a Bruce Wayne who just met this kitty cat. Yeah, exactly. Put a fire on her head. I would. So after they kill the five henchmen, they say to Penguin. Oh, man, you must have been manipulated. I guess you really are the Commodore. They back-ass him again and start driving, but the Batmobile suddenly has engine trouble, which allows Penguin to get the drop on him and steal the Batmobile. Oh, do you know, hold on. Do you know how they wake up the Penguin? You know what they spray in his face? What? Batwake. Did they? I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. He says, spray him with the Batwake again. Well, they must get sprayed by Penguin stuff a lot because they have a pill that counters his... His knockout gas, so... Yeah, must be his go-to thing. So, Penguin steals Batmobile, but Batman and Robin let, let him. And so they get on to, like, the fifth vehicle that they have in this show as we get introduced to the Bat Cycle. Yes. Now, I believe from all the vehicles they introduced, I think it was the Bat Cycle that stayed in this series. So now they're heading back to the Batcopter because they're from, I guess, the Batmobile has tracking a device on it or something because they know exactly where Penguin's going. So they go to the Batcopter, they get in it, they go up, but Riddler wants to sh- shoot off another one of his riddles and accidentally clips the Batcopter in the air and Batman and Robin crash. And that's in- the end of the movie. Into a convention for foam rubber. <laughs> Literally a pile of rubber outside of a warehouse building. And... Bruce is like, man, we are the luckiest people in the world. Although I might have saw this out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, screw you, movie. Right. So which which one is it, Bruce? Did you see it or are you just lucky? And all, there's people walking around this pile of foam. But they don't react to the plane and Batman Robin getting out of it. They're still examining the foam. Like They're more interested in the foam than a plane crash with two superheroes in it. Yeah, everyone in this world is stupid. Yeah, they're just so disinterested. Like, uh... Yeah, so there's villains and heroes doing their thing. We're just living our lives, I guess. No wonder why Batman's not a wanted vigilante. If he didn't exist in this world, it would blow up. Yeah. Ten times over by now. The bad guys want to dehydrate this security council. 
why is the Security Council the only hope for the hope of the world? I never got why dehydrating and kidnapping the Security Council is a worldwide thing. The Security Council? Oh, you mean the uh, World Organization people? Yeah, they're, they're called the World <laughs> Organization Security Council. Yeah, I, was like, I guess it was like mimicking who? And it's just like all the world leaders, I guess, or people who represent the United States, Nigeria, uh, Spain, Russia, every big country in the world. And they're just arguing. That's all they do is argue. Well, Batman and Robin, after they crash, go run to the Security Council because I guess they know that the bad guys are headed there for some reason. Yes. Don't and, know why. And then the council gets dehydrated because they have no peripheral vision. The, no, they literally... <laughs> the bad guys walk in. Yes. And start individually shooting the council, and none of them are noticing that we're being turned to dust. No. It made sense with the villains because the henchmen, because uh, you could argue that they knew what was happening, but the security council should be getting up and running away. You would think so, but no, they're literally just arguing with each other the whole time. That's like it's the spoof part of it, and they're just and they just zap it one at a time, not all at once, just one at a time down the line. All right, so then answer me this. Why does the United Council building that they're in have access to an abandoned submarine dock? <laughs> <laughs> because why not? The movie needs the movie. Because that the bad guys needed a convenient place to dock? Is that why? <laughs> That's exactly why. At some point, they capture the security council. They get back in the sub. Batman and Robin chases them. And so they're in the bat boat. And Robin, at some point, says, Holy Bikini. Yes. And at that point, I was like, they just are running out of holy jokes at this point. And there's two more to come still. The bad guys are underwater. Robin and Batman and Robin on top, on, on the surface of the water. And so Rob, they start circling it. And they start shooting the bad guy's submarine with some kind of sonic pulse gun. Yeah, they don't, they don't ever explain what they're shooting them with. But it's destroying the sub, and it's comic- Lee, like the the people who turn to dust or their vials oh. are shaking back and forth. If they're not only shaking back and forth, they're defying gravity because it literally goes from one angle, like flat, flat down, back up, back to other way, and just back and forth. <laughs> I didn't notice until this point in the movie, but all the penguins henchmen are pirates. You didn't notice that? No, I didn't notice it. Like they're named Bluebeard and stuff. Yeah, they keep saying Ahoy and. All yeah, the other saying. I just never noticed. Oh, it took man. me to this point in this. But anyway, the bad guys are forced to uh, surface. And now, with this 30 minutes left in the movie, and now we get the the fight with the pals and the stuff. It's the first time we get all the sound effects. Yeah, I was kind of upset it was this late in the movie. I guess they were saving it. But it, honestly, it turns out that this fight scene just feels like they're having a pool party. Yeah. Because their goal is to get people from on the boat into the water and still fight for some reason. Yeah, well, so they're fighting on top of the sub, and Batman and Robin just keep punching all the bad guys into the water. They get knocked in the water themselves. Yep. All except for Catwoman, who goes back down in the sub, and she trips, and her mask <laughs> falls off. And then there's a good a minute, solid minute of Batman looking at the camera, sad, for the realization that Kitty Cat was Catwoman the whole time. Yeah, and it's a long pause. The music stops. He's just staring at the camera. <laughs> and then we, the Commodore shows up and accidentally breaks the council's dust. Not only does he, like, trip into it and then he breaks it all together, he also achoos, sneezes all over the place. Which makes no sense because it, they, it, they clearly showed that the stupid vials were glued to that freaking table. So, so the bad guys are captured, but and everything's solved except for the dust council because apparently they're hoping a world so the end of this movie is batman and robin in the back cave dressed up in scientist as scientists over their costumes <laughs> yeah. yes you noticed that i don't understand why they're in costume in the back cave they don't they don't need to be in costume at this point but they have created this meme called a dust separator no, no, it's called a super molecular dust separator. I had to read why? That. <laughs> That's all I, I wrote. Why with question marks and exclamation points? Why? Mm. Because holy jumble, Tito. That's why. All the dust is different colors. How hard is it to separate it back? Because it's dust. Have you tried? Have you touched dust? Yeah, but it's there's one. There's no way they collected all of it. 
Yeah, you know, especially with the man sneezing. You know, there's that, that these people aren't coming back. Right. Realistically. Two, if they manage to collect it all, you don't need an elaborate machine to do it. All you need is to separate it by color. So they manage to separate all the dust and they then they go back to the exact spot where they're dehydrated for some reason. Why do they do it in the safety of their bat lab? I don't know. And this is a worldwide event. They get a call. They call the president, who is apparently Lyndon B. Johnson at this time. Oh, it's never show him. So I was just curious. Yeah, well, I I looked it up. I was like, who is the president in 1966? And I didn't even have to look very far because I just went down to the cast in the Batman 66 wiki. And it says it. It says it right there. Oh, that's interesting. It says Van Williams was an uncredited voice as President Linda B. Johnson. But what they end up doing is they managed to rehydrate the Security Council and have the world saved because seven people are brought back to life. Eight people. Get it right. Whatever. But this is world news, apparently. But here's my thing. They were all in vials when dust. So when they re it, shouldn't they, like, explode it out of the vials and, like, you know... They were in vials, like, all connected to a weird science setup. And if they just pop back into existence, the yeah. vials, I guess, got vanished from reality. Who knows? And they're just... They, get, they go back to arguing. Like, nothing happens. And then we, we learn that all their minds have been switched. Yes. Is it really that's what they say? Yeah, because they're all in different bodies. All the um, Security Council people have different personalities than what they were initially. Oh, I wonder why the audio was not synced right. Like, what's going on? I, I did not pick that up. Okay. Yeah, no, all their minds got switched. And Batman says, maybe this is a good thing, but we should go just in case. Ace And <laughs> Batman and Robin walk over to the window and climb out through the window. While the security council and all the police that were with them in the room do not see them do this. And they're standing right next to them. Mm-hmm. No broad one, daylight. Broad daylight. 17 people in this room. No one sees Batman and Robin walk out a window. Nope. And that's how that movie ended. Easily my favorite one so far we've seen, honestly. I went into... I don't know what I was doing or why... It bothered me as much as it did, but man, I just, it hurt this one. You need to watch it again, my friend. This is like pure gold, pure comedy, satire. I like this Batman. I like Batman 66. I don't know what it was going into it. It felt too long. It dragged in a lot of spaces for me. That I'll agree with. It's hour 44. It can easily be an hour 20 at most, (laughs) at most. The stupidity of the jokes and the riddles, like the way they can they should have, they could have come up with something, you know, something feasible. Even the, because the Riddler, his riddles really don't make no sense, but they don't make sense in a very dark way. Well, how so? How a dark way? Like there's a riddle. I don't remember it completely. There's a riddle in the Arkham Asylum game that he says. In one of his tapes. Um, you know that classic riddle, uh, what walks on four legs, two legs, and one leg? Yes. And the psychiatrist he's talking to says, oh, it's a human person. Because, you know, throughout ages. And Riddler's like, no. You know, it, the answer to it is a baby. Each one. He crawls on four legs, then he walks on two. And if he cut one of his legs off, he stands on one. Well, that's dark. That's extremely dark. Yeah, like, his joke, his riddles are stuff like that. Like, the one was an egg, the answer was an egg. Yeah, it was white, then yellow and white, or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you came in with the wrong expectations, I guess. You came in with something more. I knew what the show was. I knew what I was getting into. I guess I was just not in the mood for it. That that could be it. Because this is just a really, like I said, goofy, childish. If you like Austin Powers, you're going to like this. That's the same mindset you need for this kind of movie. Because I was nitpicking the shit out of it. Oh, so would I. I was doing it out of a fun way. Yeah, no, but no. I it, like there's tw- Every time those riddles came up, my brain literally exploded. Oh, yeah. 
I, they, were impossible. I, they were impossible to understand and get it. Anytime they needed to do something, I was like, "Why? Why?" That I get that that the trope, and that's where all that came from, and I understand what's happening. But for it, just wasn't working for me this time around. No, that's totally fair. I tell I don't I don't agree with you, but I get where you're coming from. Oh man, I don't know. What did you rate in it? My honest rating on this movie, okay, obviously I went with a positive mindset and I enjoyed every second of it. Uh, I don't get this one a. I was going to give it an 8 when I first watched it, but the more I simmered on it, I'm going to drop it down to a 7 out of 10. So. <laughs> What's your rating, TJ? With the attitude I went into with it, with how I was feeling about it, I was leaning towards a 4. Oof. But objectively, for what it is and where it is, I actually think it's a six. Really? Yeah. Because this is, it's true to its TV nature. It's true to what it is. It's not a bad movie. It's just a ridiculous no. movie. Yes. yes. It's an, it's above average movie. I don't think it's a great movie, like seven-ish, but it's a good movie. See, I think it's like on the verge. It's that to me. It's a movie that's rememberable, and I will easily watch again. That's why it's at a seven. But I wouldn't rewatch this. Oh, I will happily. This is I can watch with a group of friends and just enjoy watching this all together. Yeah, this is not something I would return to. But at the same time, if I had never seen it before, like going into it, maybe I would. Like, what am I watching here? You know what I'm saying? Okay. But like now that I've seen it. I don't feel a need to rewatch it. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? Man. Out of all the ones we've watched so far, this is the first one I would definitely hop on, have it playing 24-7. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you have the urge to watch the TV show? I do now, yes. After watching this, I wanted to watch all three seasons. Yeah, see, I didn't. I was like, I watched it, and I was like, oh, man, I- I don't know if I could go back and do three seasons of this because there's over a hundred episodes of this. I'm, if they're short episodes, if they are thirty minute episodes, I'm fine with that. I think they're thirty minute episodes. Yeah, that's, def- that's definitely digestible then. Because if they're like an hour long, I wouldn't watch those then. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to relook at it uh, later down the line. No, yeah, because you came in salty for some reason. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Maybe I was tired, because I watched it late at night last night. I watched it at, like, 11 o'clock last night. Yeah, yeah, and that's... You can't be doing that. Are there over 100 episodes on this? Yeah, I think so. There's no way. Hold on. First season. Let me see here. Season 1, 34 episodes. Season 2, 60 episodes. Oh, Se- my gosh. Season 3, 26 episodes. Oh, man. I don't know now. Can I really watch 50 hours of this show? <laughs> Probably. 120 oh. episodes total. And what I'm looking at right now, it doesn't even look like it has a real ending. The last episode's called Minerva of Mayhem and Millionaires. And Minerva opens a spa for Gotham's millionaire and tricks them into parting with their cat. Yeah, Excuse I, me. I watch this. I would definitely watch this. You have fun with that. Oh, I'm not going to, but I would. <laughs> Maybe during our TV review I'll watch this. During what? Our TV review of the movies or comic book shows. I don't know if we're going to do that. Yeah, we are. Get, get in the comments, viewers. Listeners. Um, I don't know. This, looking at how many episodes was in this one was, and then looking at how many episodes The Adventures of Superman had, and let's see here. It's way too many episodes to come do a TV one of these. Uh, we'll just do a highlight reel, I guess. The best of each season. I don't know about that. Will the viewers decide? N- well, no. It's my podcast, and if I don't want to do it, I'm not doing it. No, nah, no. Nah, it's the viewers' podcast. They may be egg suckers, but they're intelligent well, egg suckers, what, TJ. Once the viewers start editing the podcast and Pope posts in the podcast, then they can tell me. Wait, they're not that smart. You know that. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Idiots. Idiots.